What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a free extension that makes working with dimensions much easier inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find dimension tools by going into the SketchUp extension warehouse and just searching for dimension tools. And on my list, it's the last thing that shows up. Um, it's an extension, it's downloadable for free, and it's created by Didier Burr. And um, one thing to note about this is this hasn't been updated in a long time, but at least as of SketchUp 2025, it's working on my computer. So if you do click on install, it's gonna tell you that the extensions marked is not being compatible with your operating system. Um, I went ahead and clicked proceed and everything is pretty much working as it should. Um, but as always, you may run into some weird issues with uh, this being developed for an older version. But once you open this up, notice what it's going to do is it's going to give you a tool set of different things you can do with dimensions. It's got a bunch of interesting functionality in here. So the first tool that we've got in here is just a simple tool for adding a dimension with new rotation. And so the way that this tool works is you can activate this. And basically what you do is you pick points, right? So I'm going to pick a point, maybe right here. We'll pick a point right here like this. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna let you set how far off of this you want the rotation to be. So um, this is actually going to be how far the dimensions are going to be from your model, but then it's gonna give you this little deal right here, which allows you to set the actual direction that this is. So in this case, I might type in a value of 90 degrees right here. That's gonna add that dimension here at 90 degrees from where we were previously. And so that can actually be really helpful because it gives you a little bit more control over the orientation of those dimensions, right? So first off, if I use the SketchUp dimension tool, I can definitely dimension between two points right here. That's not a problem, but you kind of have options for um, each of the 90 degree directions, right? Up, down, left, and right. While that one allows you more control over which direction it's going to go, but it also just gives you a little bit better control over just kind of the directionality of the, uh, of the dimensions. So for example, say that I pick a point right here and a point right here with the built-in SketchUp tool, there is kind of a location in here where you can do kind of like a 90 degree offset like this, or you can go straight up and down. But beyond that, you don't really get a whole lot of control. And so this tool is going to give you a bit more control, right? So I'm just going to pick a point on the corner right here. We'll pick another point over here. And again, we want this to be on this surface like this, but now we can set our distance and we can set the number of degrees this is going to have. And you can inference to points on here if you don't wanna type in a value. So for example, I could just find 145 degrees and click, and it's going to add that dimension in here, just like this. This gets really valuable when you get things that are off on like multiple different axes, because again, you just get a little bit more control. So if I click between these corner points right here, I've got kind of up and down, and then I've got kind of like weird off to the side directions like this, where this one can actually do a better job of aligning between these two points. Whoops. And so if I click in here, right, I can click between one point and the other point right here. And again, you can pick your distance and it just gives you a lot more control over the way that this is actually going to be aligned in here. You can actually align it so that it's along um, and off object like this. So um, definitely interesting from that standpoint. However, we've got other tools in here which are even more powerful. So first off, this one, the dimension face doesn't actually work for me. So um, this is one of those things when you're dealing with extensions that um, were set to work with older versions of SketchUp is I can't actually get this one to do anything. It really doesn't matter though because you've got this next option which allows you to create dimensions based on all of the bounds of an object. Well, in this case, the bounds would just be the four sides, right? So I can click and then move my mouse and click again, and it's going to give me dimensions of all of the different sides of this object. Now, one thing to note about this is this is giving you dimensions based on the outside bounds of your selection. Meaning, if I was to run this, I'm gonna get the same thing. Even though that shape has ins and outs, it's not actually gonna dimension the ins and the outs, it's just gonna dimension based on the outside boundary of the selection itself. So. If I use this on a three-dimensional shape, right, it's gonna give me the outside bounds of all of the sides, like this. 
So you can see how it adds all of these dimensions in here, which could be overkill, but you might need something like that. And it's going to do the same thing for shapes that aren't rectangular. So for example, if I was to use this on this cone right here, it's going to give me dimensions of the bounds of the cone. So I'll see things like the height, I'll see things like um, all of the different, uh, the width of the base, things like that. And then you could come in here and delete out some of them too. So this is a good way to really quickly add some dimensions and it works on more complex objects as well, like this pool table. Now note again, it's giving you the outside dimensions of the bounding box of the object. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you overall lengths and widths of that selection like this. And then again, you could come in here and you can delete out some of them, right? So if you've got them all on the bottom, for example, or on one side, you don't really need them on the other sides. So you could come in here and you could remove these, but it's still way faster than dimensioning this manually. So um, definitely an interesting tool for doing things like that. Now, let's talk about some of the more powerful tools for adding different dimensions um, that kind of continue. So we've got two options in here. We've got a chained and we've got a base. And we'll look at both of these. But the way they work is you have to start by adding one dimension. So I'm going to add a dimension right here. But if I use the dimension chained, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to select a dimension like this. And then it's going to allow you to continue dimensioning and it's going to keep that same length off of the object right here, right? So say that I was to add a dimension right here. Notice what this is going to do is if I do the dimension chain and click on this, we can find our next point and our next point just like this, in order to do kind of a continuous dimension that's all kind of like the same distance off of your object. Now this can be really powerful for things like uh, for things like columns and other things that have spacing like this, because again, you can just pick it. Once you pick it, you can just add continuing dimensions just like this. And you could also, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to continue it from this point right here, you could just pick this and then start picking up edges like this, and I didn't do a very good job clicking on the point right there, but that's okay. So you can kind of set that however you want to um, inside of the model. Now you can also use this for things like stairs. So for example, if you wanted to mention all of these, which you probably wouldn't, right? Because they're all going to be the same. But if you did need to show all of these different dimensions, or if you had steps that were like different widths, right? If you had something that varied, this could be a really quick way to do that. Now there's also an option in here to not only do these kind of straight in a line that's continuing, there's also an option in here to do a cumulative dimension. So what that means is if I activate this and then click here, it's going to set an offset. The offset is going to be how far out the next dimension is going to be from where you're at. So it's going to do kind of a stair stepping thing. But say I typed in 18 inches right here, well then I could select this point and I could select this point. Now, 18 inches is not going to be long enough. So maybe we want to do something more like 10 feet in this case. So we could just activate this, click here. We're going to set our offset to 10 feet. But now if I click this point and this point, it's going to do cumulative dimensions starting from that first point right here. So you can do kind of overall dimensioning if you want to do that. Now there's some other tools in here that are super powerful for this, which we'll talk about in a second. But if you were to do that over here, so say that we were to dimension from this point to this point, for example, and then we wanted to add a cumulative dimension to the next one, what we would do is we would set that base offset. In this case, we'll say maybe like three feet, which may still be too far, but we'll go ahead and try it. But notice how I can do a cumulative dimension to the start of every one of these, just like this really quickly with that same base point. Now this does work with like rotational objects as well. So notice how I've got like one dimension in here. Well, let's say that we were to use this and we're going to activate this tool. We're going to select that dimension and we're going to set our base offset in this case to like seven inches. Well, now I could pick the central point of each one of these and notice how it's giving me that constant offset for each one of them like this and they're aligned 
with that central point. So you can use this in order to set those kind of like vertical offsetting dimensions as well if you need to do that. So quick review, chain dimension is going to be a continuation in the same line of the individual dimensions. Cumulative is going to be starting from that one point and then just adding a further length everywhere you click like this. And now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, but say that you do make a mistake like this one, there's an option in here for dimension trim and extend. So in this case, what I could do is I could click on a dimension and notice how that's going to let me trim or extend the selected dimension like this. So you can actually adjust this so that your lengths are where you want them to be like this. And notice how it's automatically moving the ends depending on which one you're closer to like this. So if you do need to make an adjustment, this trim and extend is going to be super valuable for that. Now there's also a tool built in here that does angular dimensioning, which is great because we don't really have a good angular dimensioning tool in SketchUp. So the way that works is you pick your edges like this, then you can move your mouse to set how far out you want that dimension to be. And then you can set an up down distance like this. But notice what that's going to do is that's going to give you an angular dimension with a measurement inside of SketchUp. And so that's great for more powerful or more uh, complex shapes like this one. So if I wanted an angular dimension between these two objects, I could do that. I could do an angular dimension between this one and this one. And I could make it go in if I wanted to as well like this. So it's a really easy way to add those angular dimensions, which is something SketchUp has lacked for a while if you do want to measure angles. So next up is a super powerful tool. What this one does is it tries to auto dimension between points. So in this case, if I was to click between this point and this point, right here, notice what it's going to do is it's going to try to pick up the vertices along that line and add a dimension in here. So in this case, I'm going to type in a value of 90 degrees, but notice how that's automatically going to dimension in here. Now you could do this really between any two sets of points, right? So if you wanted to do this kind of triangular or diagonally like this, you could do that. Now in this case, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but you can kind of see the logic of what it's doing is it's drawing a line in here, figuring out where this intersects with those lines, and then it's adding those dimensions based on that, like this. So maybe not a super great example from a would you do this standpoint, but it really shows the way this works. And so one cool thing about this is this is literally picking up all of those vertex points. So even if you have a more complex shape like this one, it's still going to add those dimensions in here automatically. Now this thing, this can act a little bit weird. Um, so like for example, this is just a live component that I exploded in here, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick a dimension point from one end. We're going to move down to the other end right here. And you got to be really careful that you're on that same edge, but notice how this one, for whatever reason, it doesn't pick up some of the vertices in here. And I'm not really sure why, but it picks up others. So like, for example, if you move down here, notice how it's picking up these two ends, but over here it's not, I could not tell you why it's doing that. So that is something to kind of look out for when you're working with this tool, but it's still a lot faster than coming in here and trying to dimension all of those little gaps in here manually just like this. You just have to be aware that you do still need to double check where it's placing these in here. So another example of this is right here, where if I try to run this across the top, and we'll say these are going to be offset just a little bit, and we'll say they're going to be at 90 degrees right here. Notice how if you run this on the top, it doesn't pick up all of the points right here, but it does if you run it on the bottom, which is very strange to me. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, so that is something to just kind of be aware of, but again, still a very valuable tool in my opinion. And so we do also have a couple other tools in here. So there's one where you can rotate dimensions. So if I activate this, right, you can just pick a dimension and then it's just going to rotate it based on those base points in here like this. So if you wanted to rotate a dimension like 90 degrees, you've got the option to do that. We already talked about the trim and extend. And then the last two are really valuable for splitting up or merging together dimensions. So let's say, for example, that we were to auto dimension right here and it doesn't work. 
So it didn't come in here and split up all of these dimensions. Well, what this first option will do is it'll let you split a dimension. So I can click on this, right? And then I can pick a point right here. And I can run it again and I can split this dimension over and over again like this. So for whatever reason you don't get what you want in here, you can use this to split all of those individual dimensions. Now say that we were to do the opposite. So say that I was to add a dimension in here and then we'll go ahead and use the chain dimension in order to quickly add these like this. We'll say that you wanted that to be more of an overall dimension. Well, you've got an option over here for dimension merge. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to pick different dimensions and you can merge them together in order to get an overall length. So you've got an option for splitting and an option for merging. So again, super powerful tool from that standpoint. Um, I really like what you can do with this, even though it's an older extension. All right. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about dimension tools. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to check out some more SketchUp extensions, you can check out my ultimate extensions guide, which has well over 150 extensions in it at this point. You can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash extensions. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.